Are we, Zach, are we ready? Great. Um, I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. Can I have an uh, exception to the agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Murray, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous, four to zero. Um, we'll move to item number three, which is a vote discussion of a one day wine and malt uh, beverages license. Are there, is there anyone? We'll start with um, St. Mary's Parish Center. Ms. Harris, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, well, she brought a student so that's going to be oh, going really? on that trip as Maybe well. Melissa would like to come up yes. too. Is that her name, Melissa? That's correct, yes. Yep. Melissa, she knows she was on the basketball team. That's correct, yeah. yeah. She's my shy one. Yes. <laughs> okay. Could this you please identify yourselves yeah. and give us your address? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, your address? Oh, Just so everyone. Address? Yeah. Oh, Melissa Harris, 26 Ridge Hill Road. Great. So. Yes, Harris Ditto. Yeah, great. So just uh, want to tell us a little bit about the event. Give a little plug so everyone, the thousands of people watching can let's see. Well, it's a group of high school students. It's the Appalachian Special Project. It's going to be April 14th at St. Mary's Parish Center. And it's, kind of, it's a fundraiser. Um, so the kids can make some more money to help fund the trip to, they're going to go to Kentucky and West Virginia. Great. So <coughs> we need a one day beer and wine license for April 14th. And it's at St. Mary's Parish Center? At St. Mary's <coughs> Parish and Center. And this has been going on for years. I know my babysitter from years ago right. did it. So this is, what, five or ten years yeah. running? Yeah, and this will be Melissa's first trip, so. Great. Yeah. And uh, you go down and you help the needy and you build houses and you do... Whatever they ask you to do. <laughs> Great. Great. Motion, Mr. Chairman? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one-day wine and malt beverage license for a fundraising event for the Appalachia Service Project on Saturday, <coughs> April 14, <coughs> 2012, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. at St. Mary's Parish Center, 1 Kent Street, Sichuan Harbor. I'll second that. Nice to Second done. by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just one quick it. question: Where do people get tickets? Um, if they want to come, I, I, you know, I'm not sure. I think that they can just get them at the parish center. Okay, so just come on the evening of the 14th at. I don't, I don't even know if they're selling tickets this year. I think it's just all the parents are just going to go, and mm -hmm. we're going to have raffles and um, so things once you get there. Good. So just show up at 6 o'clock on the 14th and participate. Yep, yeah, St. Right. Mary's. Yeah. Thanks, Guy. Thank you. Great Congratulations stuff, folks. on a great basketball season, too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Well done. Stick around. Hmm? They might want to stick around for the rest of the this. meeting. Okay. Uh, the next uh, group that's before us is, uh, is Beth Golden here? No, I'm still at, I'm over at Gill. Come on up. I'm having Beth. Mm. Having oh, there we go. I got you. You're over here on the right side of the paper. Phyllis, how are you? I'm terrific. Great. <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> Phyllis Gill, and your address is? 50 Allen Place. Great. And tell us about what you want to do. It's my 75th birthday party. Great. Happy Good birthday. To you. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And you're having a birthday party at the Harbor Community Building? Correct. On Jericho Road? Right. And you're here for a one day uh, beer and wine Correct. license. And what's the group that's going to be? Um, Hosting it or, or I'm the hoster. <laughs> who's the Who's uh, doing the catering catering for you? Oh, Ellen uh, McK McKenzie. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And she's turned in all the liquor liabilities Supposedly, declarations. Yep. Yep, we've everything. got all that. Yep. Great. And uh, it is on May five 5th. five from five to nine. Great. Great. A motion. Move the board of select mm. vote to grant a one day wine and malt, malt beverage license <coughs> for a private party to be held on May 5th, 2012, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Citroen Harbor Community Building, 44 Jericho Road. Second. Second by Mr. Harris Thank for the you. discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Have Thank a great you. time. Thank you. I will. Congratulations. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. We will move on mm. to item number four, which is meet the applicants. There's two um, committees that we're looking to, uh, to get members on today. Um, the first <coughs> one that we'll start with is the Water Resource Committee. And we have, uh, is back, uh, Becky Malamut here? Hi, Becky, how are you? Hey, how are you? Come on up. 
and uh, you live at 195 Beaver Dam Road? Yes. So you're here to uh, fill a vacancy for the Water Resource Committee. Um, very impressive application and, and uh, resume. Um, environmental consultant now. You've worked with sustainable stream flows, um, Department of Conservation and Recreation, so you're very familiar with this area. Rick, this is probably more your forte than me. Do you want to? I yeah, mean, no, I, uh, Becky, thank you for applying. I haven't met you before, obviously, and uh, when I saw you guys <coughs> come across this, uh, the, our desk here, this is exactly what this committee needs. Great. So um, I don't know how you first became aware of the committee or whatever, but thank you very much for volunteering and mm -hmm. whoever recruited you and all this sort of stuff. Really important committee. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, identifying water and, um, and not just new water, but, you know, the whole sort of system, what's going on. And... Uh, Someone who's got the um, <coughs> experimental and scientific background that you have is really very good. Great. So, any questions? Perfect. Um, Great. Thank you for applying. Thank like Rick said, it's it's a vital resource for our town that we're looking to, you know, keep clean and find more of it. So, you know, thanks for your help. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Right. So what we're going to do is yeah. we're just meeting you now. Yes. Towards the end of the meeting, we'll make the final appointments. Okay. You can watch us on television. Okay. Or you can stay in for all the fun. <laughs> okay. Great. That's thank it? you. Yes, you thank you, Becky. Thanks. Um, the next committee, which was uh, recently um, formulated, is the Veterans Advisory Council. And um, I've spoken with a few of the, of the members of the board, and I'm looking for my summary sheet here. Here we go. Um, we've met, we've established the, the, the framework of it, the bylaws, and um, and really gone over quite a bit, thanks to Mr. Kelly, over the last probably month or two. And we've gotten 15 applicants that are before us. I know a number of you are here uh, right now. Um, we've got people from all, all services, the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, um, Gold Star parents, veterans, non-veterans. Um, but there happens to be 15 of them. And after talking to some of the members on the board, that, that was the extreme of the membership of the committee that we wanted to have. I know that a few members of the board thought that that was going to be tough to manage in terms of um, the number of people, but a lot of you sounded like that's what you wanted to do. So we don't want to stifle the board too much. Um, so I'm going to make a suggestion that we take all 15 of you and establish the board with all 15 of you, and then ask that you come back to us after you meet and find out whether that is too many to actually run efficiently or not. And if you need to have associate members instead of full-time members and voting members, then we can tweak it as we go along. Um, but I think that there's a good group of people here, and it's a, um, a good foundation. And because we're just starting with it, you know, let you guys f feel what, what needs to be done. Um, Mr. Murray? Um, yeah, I think that's a, a fine idea. My only question is, is how do we figure out the rotation? Because usually when we first create a board, we have to stagger some terms. Mm -hmm. We don't want all 15 of you to come up in three years, <laughs> right? Um, That's a good point. So, um, uh, it was, it's in the bylaws, right? Right, I know. we still have to set. But we still have to set them. One so we would, five out of three. If we were good, so Mr. Kelly, if we were just going to appoint, if we were going to pick and choose, okay. we would need to appoint John Smith for one year and Betty Smith for two years and you know that sort of thing. Um, so that's a that's a good point. Um, one, two, and three years. So it'd be <coughs> it'd be five for one year, five for two years, and five for three years. Correct. Be right. Correct. And I'm fine with because perhaps some of these individuals might only want to be on for two years. Oh, one year. Maybe um, or one year or whatever. Maybe we could. Um, could we do this? And after they. Uh, they meet the first time, one of the first orders of business <coughs> would be f to find out, <coughs> to find five members who want to go one year, five members who want to go two years, five members who want to go all three years. And one year makes no difference, it's no different than three years as far as responsibility and voting, etc. They would just have to come up the next year I'm fine with and that. get reappointed, which they would. I'm fine. <coughs> can I ask, I'm yeah, Mr. Good. Kelly, can I ask you to, I mean, you've, you've been at the front of this. To facilitate just getting the group together, sure. you've got to have an election because you've got to elect officers, <clears throat> and then if you can go through that term aspect of it and somehow 
divvy out who's going to be a three-year, five three-year, five two-year, five one-year, and then then come back to the board and and tell us what the whole structure of it turns out to be, and um, and then obviously at that point there'll be a um, a chair, and then they can you know keep the correspondence going between the two of us, but at least that will get the ball rolling, and you guys will be able to structure it the way you think that it's going to work initially, and then after a certain period of time, if we find it's too unwieldy with that many people then we can figure out who should be associate members and, and after the first year terms up, maybe we say, you know, we, stru we restructured a little bit. Does that make sense to the board? Yes, it does. Okay, good. Great. Well, I'm just going to read off the names. Um, and and uh, these are the 15 people that we're going to appoint. And then um, you can, any, am I doing anything wrong? Um, and then uh, you guys can get together and, um, and have your first meeting and take it from there. So, and I, I apologize if I butcher your name. Um, so, Dennis Bedori. Thank you. Ed Cavell. Uh, Thomas Edwards. Richard Faust. Vincent Fontaine. James Hunt. Richard Johnson. Richard. Uh, Joseph Kelly. Karen Kelly. Um, Jack Manning, who's not here tonight. But he is very interested in it, and um, he said it's South Shore Vote Tech meeting. Uh, Bob McHugh, saw it, Bob. John Miller, Michael Scott. I didn't see I didn't see him here, but uh, um, local attorney has a lot of interest in it. Uh, ben Sumner, Summers. Ben, how are you? Thank you. And Robert Young. Great. So at this point, um, consider yourselves the, the the formation of the committee. We'll let you guys take it. At Mr. Kelly's direction initially until you until you elect a chairperson and then just get back to us in terms of the structure. Okay. Do we need a formal motion to accept all these all these individuals? So, so moved. Do. So moved. Do that at the other one. At the next, uh, right. next So week. right now this is okay, just we'll meet the, the next one. and then later on in the evening we will actually make the motion to right. appoint you all to the committee. Okay. All right. Ed, you ask. Is there a question? Yes, uh, Ed Cavell, 45 Gilson yeah. Road. Uh, curious uh, where this committee will meet. Is it a space provided by the town? Yes. So you can, you'll have to figure out the space, whether it's a library, whether it's in this building, whether it's at the uh, Gar Maritime Center, the Little Red Schoolhouse, the Gar, Gar Hall. Very appropriate. Thank you, John. Um, and um, uh, Kim can tell you how to get in touch with the various people okay. and then just schedule it. You do have to post it, though. You have to post it, so 48 hours notice before any meetings, and uh, someone has to keep minutes. So initially, someone will have to be the uh, clerk for the first meeting. We have a list of the, the folks. Yep. Names, addresses, phone numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So we'll get that. We'll get that to you, and you can uh, um, email out the first one to everybody. All oh, right. I didn't. See <laughs> right. I'm sorry. I didn't even see you in the back. Good seeing you. Great. Well, we want to thank you all for, for um, donating your time, and uh, we're very uh, um, excited about the, uh, the work that you guys are going to do. Any other comments from, from anyone? Nope. Great. So thank you, and we'll make the actual appointments later on in the meeting. Okay. So if you want to uh, stay, you can. If you want to watch us on TV, you can do that as well. Any other questions from? Okay. Watching on TV, and then I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> Those people can't eat after they watch us. <laughs> Great. So if you're gonna, so uh, we're gonna move on to item number five. Tony, picture, picture time. Picture. Oh, that's right. So we've got to take a, a one minute break to get a quick photograph of the five of us. You want in the hallway? <laughs> Do you want to stand in front? Standing in front. Picture for The 375th. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for this. We are not Y'all look so cute. 
Okay, now we'll move to item number five, which is the walk-in period. Did, was that? Did, did, does everybody understand the TV land why we're taking a picture? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> just in case I assume it was on TV, people might want to know why we're standing the, up there. It's going to be in the post office. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, I think that photograph was for the 375th booklet, and they wanted to get a picture of the uh, um, current selectmen. So there you have it. Um, are there any walk-ins? Seeing none. We'll move on to item number six. Is Al here? He's in the hall. Okay. Um, this will be a discussion vote of a beach trash pickup policy. There goes the little hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to discuss uh, how uh, Mr. Bangard has put together a, a policy of how uh, trash could be picked up at the beach. Al, if you want to come up, we're, uh, um, and I'll let him discuss it before we pick it apart. Hello. Um, I want to uh, today update you on a, this is the beach discussion, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Beach trash pickup. Yeah. Today's Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to bring you up to speed on a couple of things going on in the area of uh, beach services improvements. And then we'll discuss an option that I like to put before you, which is the beach, beach trash collections. Um, and I'll do that last. But I'd like to tell you first uh, in the Minot Beach area, uh, starting actually tomorrow, you know there are two parking lots. There's the one that's paved and underwater, and then there's the one that's dirt and underwater <laughs> at high tide. Well, the, the one that's the second one, called My Beach Parking Lot 2, we're going to be raising up a foot or so with a dense grade. So we will now have a, a, a nice big square parking lot for residents to use for uh, that where the car won't be underwater when they come back at high tide. Great. And uh, that's being used with some of the beach revolving fund revenue. We had started a project to upgrade the first beach parking lot at Minot, the one that's paved. Uh, the, the cost to do that exceeds the funds available currently uh, because when we do make those changes, which will be to expand slightly in size that parking lot and pave it and line stripe it so that it's more efficient, um, we are also going to be putting in enhanced uh, drainage collection systems so that runoff uh, it meets higher standards for protecting the uh, nearby wetlands from car parking there. Um, another thing we're going to be doing in that parking lot is that parking lot we've discovered, actually we own a lot more parking lot than is apparent there. There are a number of um, uh, pieces of property adjacent to it that have over the years um, encroached on that property. Fences, uh, equipment storage, boats, um, that sort of thing. And so we're going to be approaching those pat those property owners uh, to discuss with them uh, the fact that we would like to expand that parking lot uh, to take full advantage of the town space available and be able to add about 15 to 20 more car parking spaces in those par in, that, in the parking lot. Great. So that's held up that parking lot number one work a little bit. We will be attacking that uh, with some discussion with residents uh, this spring and then we will be making uh, further improvements to it in the fall. Uh, what we're going to be doing in that parking lot right now is paving the entrances to it, which are so rough and bumpy that we see a lot of mufflers and uh, hubcaps along the fences there. So those changes are going on in the uh, beach parking lot in Minot. 
Are you we restriping? I know you gave us a couple of plans where you had different stripe arrangements. Are you doing that, or you're going to restripe the? Well, we restripe stripe that one after we uh, finish paving and raising up and expanding the footprint of it. So I'm talking won't, about we'll, number one. In number one, we'll, but we won't get to that before summer starts. Okay. Uh, we will we will restripe restripe it so that the stripes are visible, uh, but we won't use the. Uh, the higher priced uh, thermoplastic better striping, which is more permanent, until we get the final footprint uh, no, sorted out. We saw out. two or three different plans, and I know some people had some questions on, on some of them. So just before you do it, if you can tell us which one you're planning. For sure. For sure. I will. Uh, we'll actually put it out here as well. Um, and the exciting thing is to find out we actually own more land than, than we're using. So we're, we're going to That's essentially right. reclaim that land and put it to good use for the for the uh, rate for the sticker holders, and then um, we will take the the work we're doing in the mine at beach number two, which is raising it with gravel or dense grade. Uh, we're going to use that same approach down at Peggy Beach to get Peggy Beach um, out of the water, if you will. Uh, that's a bigger project. We'll work with conservation as we have this these uh, these other two projects, but that's where we're going with uh, putting enhancements into the beach. Uh, we're also looking at. Uh, the feasibility of putting in foot wash stations at a couple of the beaches so that when you get to the parking lot you can hose off your feet uh, um, before getting in the car. I think that would be a nice amenity. Yes? Mr. Mark? I just make sure I understand what's going on. This all sounds wonderful improvements and <coughs> I applaud you guys for doing that. This is being funded from the beach sticker revolving 100 fund? 100 percent from the beach sticker uh, revolving fund, correct. So this is essentially being paid for by those people that buy stickers and therefore are using the beach uh, are the ones paying for this. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, this last idea I wanted to discuss with you um, is an alternative. We were asked to look at alternatives to, uh, the, to resolving a problem on the beach, which is we have barrels, uh, uh, trash barrels on the beaches and trash barrels at the entrances to the beaches. Um, we have uh, staff members who work through the weekends um, re re uh, emptying those trash barrels all weekend long. Uh, they go from one beach to one parking lot, one to the, to the next, and, and empty the, the barrels. They also do it during the weeks. However, you can never keep up with the trash barrels at the beach. And in fact, what happens is you end up with a lot of accumulated trash at those trash barrels right in the midst of where people are enjoying the beach time. Invariably, uh, it attracts seagulls, attracts other things, um, which then creates somewhat of a, not a health hazard, but at least an uh, unattractive situation at the beach. So what we looked at was uh, what, what actually eight of the nine other towns that we polled do. Of eight of the nine other beach towns, uh, only one has barrels, trash barrels, at the beach. All other towns are, if you will, carry out what you carry in so that uh, people will lug stuff to the beach such as their their coolers uh, their lunches and other assorted items and then they lug them home and you can this is true certainly at all the national parks at the, at the seashores national seashores most cape uh, beaches and and our neighboring beaches the idea is to not put out those uh, 55 gallon drums with uh, plastic bags in it but instead uh, put uh, small dumpsters in each one of the parking lots. So for instance, go back to Minot, if you will, in the Minot Beach parking lot, there'd be a small dumpster that would be you know, approximately uh, six feet by six feet by about four feet with a slider on it so that people could throw stuff in it or lift up the lid and throw stuff in it. Um, that would be emptied on Friday and on Monday by a uh, trash hauler such as waste management. Um, we can't put those on the beaches. We can't put those on the streets right next to where people are coming off, say, Minot Beach or where they're coming off the Hummer Rock Beach. They'd have to be in the parking lots where those big trucks could get to them safely. Um, so the idea is to use six-yard commercial dumpsters in the parking lots for people to bring their beach trash and deposit it versus having trash barrels on the beach uh, where people deposit the trash and then have employees go remove it. And so before we started down this path, other than getting the facts together, um, I wanted to review this with you because it, uh, it is a change for our residents. It, it could be viewed as a very positive change because we don't have trash accumulating on the beach, or it could be viewed as 
a, a reduction in service because we don't have trash barrels on the beach. And I, I, I wanted to uh, bring it to you because I don't want to start down a path and then have to revert in the middle of the summer. Great. And Al, Al you know, we've said this for all the projects you've been before us. It's a great one-page summary, so we all have got it, and it's uh, very inclusive. Um, we've been talking about this for a long time. I know Joe and I have in terms of just on Sunday afternoon, they're overflowing, and it's just a mess on, on all of the beaches. So, um, Joe? Just a just, uh, thought on, on the containers that you'd have in the parking lot. You say 60 yard? No, six. Six yard. Six yard. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, would they be, uh, I'm just thinking of the different beaches. On my, on my end, you'd have to put it in one of the parking lots, right? Yes. So that means people would have to carry the trash that they carried in. Yes. They have to carry it out. Yes, sir. To the, and it's probably the same thing at Egypt. Yes. Uh, you, at Egypt, you'd put it over there near that, uh, where the trash barrels are today at the edge yeah. of Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Peggy would be somewhere in the parking lot. Peggy would be probably down, uh, down near where the mitt, uh, mutt mitt bags are. You know, the. Yep, 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 yep. yep. And, the, and where, well, where the portalettes are. Yes. Right. Yes. So the. Uh, I'm just thinking of as far as residents, neighbors. Yeah, a lot of considerations. Yeah. What about Hummer Rock? Hummer it would be? Hummer Rock would be in the fire station parking lot. In the fire station parking lot. Or it could be right at the entrance to the beach, but that might be problematic. As far as visually problem. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's my concern. That's fine, that's my question. Uh, uh, one, one consideration is that it, they might attract um, Household trash on occasion. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. I think well, that's going to be one of my questions. I think we all wrote that one. Um, John, you want to? Sure, I got a few. Al, actually, um, I, I actually applaud the idea of trying to do a carry in and carry off. I'm concerned though because I know um, when I look at Sand Hills, there's really no ideal location for all the beaches there <coughs> other than the parking lot, and people go and um, whether it's the Museum Beach or any of the Sand Hill beaches. Um, they, they've utilized the, the barrels, I think. Um, if you remove the barrels, the fr one of the first concerns I had was violators. What kind of policy are you going to have? Because there will be people who will violate, throw their trash in there, and they'll probably be very clever about it and you know, won't have anything, their names on it. So you're going to find that you're going to get a lot more violators using a six-yarder um, because it's going to be easy. Throw it in, or if, if, and I, I think because it's, it's six-yarders, it's an open. Uh, you open a sliding right. plastic so door. A, yeah, right. That, yes, that'll but it's happen. A, mm -hmm. um, the other thing that concerns me is the fact that there are a lot of, um, I say, people with goodwill who go and clean up the beaches, and usually they pick up, put it down near the barrels, and leave it there to be picked up, knowing that people who go on the beaches who don't carry off leave it there. Hmm. So one of the questions I had for you is, if you're not going to have barrels, are you going to have, you know, a, a crew that will go and walk the beaches? What I used to do when I used to work for the beaches, we'd do pick sticks. In the morning, we'd go and we'd pick up anything that was left over, whether they were diapers or, or you know, pieces of, of you know, refuge or, or, you know, just anything, you know, bags or something. So that's one of the questions I have. I this know you're you saying- were, You were a lifeguard, were you? No, I wasn't. I worked for the, uh, oh, the parks David, department. Okay. Mowing lawns, Good. picking up garbage, pick sticking, yep. and going down to the beach in the middle of the afternoon with a dump truck picking up the garbage. Oh. So, uh, no, I was not a lifeguard. <laughs> Good training um, for an attorney. It was. It gave me Come a lot a of inspiration way. to realize that you know, I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, some openings this summer. <laughs> the, the other thing, though, Al, is I know you're saying you want to do this to test it, which I'm, I'm certainly willing to do, but um, I just, I, I'm, I'm concerned that, you know, we're going to see a lot more garbage on the beaches. And, and my question to you is then, then what's, the, uh, what's the option then? Are you intending to put the barrels back out again and then you're going to have that issue of garbage piling up or is there going to be some kind of cleaning of it? Um, I'm, I'm testing the waters here. I think if, if we think it's an overwhelmingly good idea, then we ought to go down the path. Um, I'm afraid if, it's, if, it's, if we're ambivalent about it and we end up having to go back to barrels in the middle of the summer, uh, we, we, we have contracted for the dumpsters and we're on the hook for that and then we've also got uh, summer hires that we haven't, uh, we haven't organized our summer crew in a certain way to to handle it, uh, so uh, and and I know the phone will ring, could ring, come July X. Uh, where are the trash barrels on the beach? To you guys or to us or to town administrator? But um, I, I think that's uh, we have to be kind of whole hog. Or my only hog. concern is that's fine, 
but what about the garbage that the people who aren't honest yes. who are going to carry it off? Right. That remains, which means it's going to be flushed out in the ocean no. or it's going to remain there. What is the option then that the town is going to do to do something along that lines? Because, um, mm. you know, obviously is it going to be on citizens then to go out and clean the beaches? And I think that's going to be a big backlash that people yeah. will be upset with. So True. I guess my, my only th question to you is, and to the town is, I'm all game to do it, but what happens if the garbage begins to collect on the beach? Uh, what are we going to do at that point? Yeah. What we'll end up doing is sending out Crews workers to pick, to pick up after our people. Yeah. Right. And, and maybe, the, maybe the lifeguards have a play in that as well. I, I made the suggestion a few years ago, and I get highly criticized by the lifeguard community uh, for making the suggestion. That was de we were dealing with seaweed. <laughs> and uh, they thought that was terrible that they would have to rake seaweed, and, and maybe they're right. But just as a thought, and I know it's way out there, but the lifeguards are down on the beach. <laughs> they're right there. If they were brought in a half an hour earlier and paid double time for that half hour, either before the beach opens or after the beach closes, whatever they prefer, to pick up the trash in their immediate area may solve the problem that John brought up and, and might give the lifeguards an extra hour's pay and uh, so I just throw that out. Sure. Mr. Murray? Uh, I like that idea, Joe, and I think um, I'm sure there's probably reasons why and all that sort of thing not to do it, but I'd suggest both before and after. Sure. Uh, one, one second, ma'am. We'll, we'll get to that in one second, but let, um, I the, will get the, to you after. The other, the other comment I had is um, this might not work economically, but could you try it maybe on one beach? That, that's what I was going to say. Um, sure. And, and I'd say pick a beach that is easily recoverable if it crashes and burns right off the bat. I think you Egypt know, Beach is probably the, uh, the best test beach in that regard because there's, you have to go down one of two paths to or from the beach. Um, yeah. The trash cans are generally in this location anyway, so it might be seen as a, an enhanced service uh, at that beach, and we can test it out and see how it works. Because I think it's a great idea, and it is one of those counterintuitive ideas. You think, well, if you're removing the barrels, it's just going to be a huge problem. But fortunately, society has gotten used to the fact and very well trained to put things to take care of the trash, and so they've found this out at parks, as you said, and everything else, that removing the barrels and making them more centralized actually works. But there is the point that, that Mr. Danahy's making. So I think if you can try it at one of them, you know, ease into it. Yep. Um, or, or try Joe's idea at one of them. Or, but whatever we try to do, let's, let's try it at one. Sean? Yeah, I didn't. Or two, I, or whatever. <coughs> you know, a small I hadn't thought of that. <coughs> I usually agree with everything you usually come up with. But this one, I don't see it really working for the, I, you know, like they had mentioned earlier, I just think you'll have to empty it four times a week. Um, and it won't be situate residents. It'll be people visiting. It is, that's my opinion. You know, they, and they may not know how to get to the transfer station, have the stickers, and all that. You know, it, I see it at the town pier a little bit. Now, you know, it, uh, there's a lot of household trash in that. Um, but I do like. I hadn't thought of that. I like Rick's idea of trying it at one Thank beach. That seems to work. Uh, try it. The other thing is, you know, we joke about it, but you know, I mean, the summer help. You know, I, I think a lot gets done around the town when the college kids come back. You know, and I, I know, well, John did it, so it's you know, and maybe not the fanciest job, and but you know, well, no, uh, they, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, it gives them a job and responsibility and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's trucks like crazy. I didn't even have a CD. <laughs> <laughs> to be driving. On. It's crazy. Well, I, I think. <clears throat> Everyone brings up a good point that it seems like in some beaches it's going to work better than in other beaches, it, you know. But even if you got it in two or three of them and it worked, yeah. right. it, it would be expand it because the, the general populace wants to pick up after themselves. And like somebody mentioned, they do pick up after others as well. Um, yes, sir. Barry Shea, fourteen oh two Road. Um, from the proposal that's been put forward, um, I just see this: um, we're going to end up with every beach has a neighborhood dumpster, um, and people are going to use it as their neighborhood dumpster. Yeah. Uh, I spent a summer playing the beaches as well, and uh, it it needs to be convenient. And if we didn't have, if we had a provision to empty a dumpster without hi hiring a commercial trash hauler, it would be an option. And you know, I'd be for all, all for trying to test it. But at the point you get to hire waste management or anyone else at a, an expense, 
when you have the entire public grounds staff you know, already there to, to handle the task. I, I just see it as an unnecessary, unnecessary expense. Can I just well, the two the two points are that you're not going to have to hire the DPW people won't have to do it. So it's kind of a cost neutral thing. Well, there's and also the, the trash that we collect now, we have to pay to dispose of um, at the transfer stations. If the transfer station doesn't give us free trash, we have to pay for the trash we dispose of at the transfer station. So it's the math we did on it looks like it's about, it's not a money savings project, it's a shift in services uh, to. Uh, yeah. And people probably throw their personal stuff in the 55 gallon drums right now anyway. They do, yes. Um, of course, it, I think that's all of our concerns if you put a bigger receptacle there, we're going to right. use it more often. Can, Tom, Tom yes. can I just, I, just to give you a frame of reference, I asked Al to look at this. Roughly we spend about 18, 000, between fifteen and $18,000 for 12 weeks on trash removal. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because we have to use extra heavy, extra gallon trash bags to do it, plus an overtime rate for some DPW workers because the beaches get their highest use on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and having gone to Egypt Beach at least two or three times a week in the two years I lived here, um, Egypt Beach is the most unsightly thing on Sunday morning and Monday morning because Saturday night between the hours of midnight or whatever and morning, um, there are beer cans everywhere and there's trash everywhere that's generated by <coughs> beachgoers who are not there to use the ocean. Um, and that's creating a huge influx of trash, um, particularly at Egypt Beach, um, with beer bottles and stuff that surprisingly are near the barrels but overflowing the barrels. And I'd submit that there's a fair number of people who are using the barrels for their household trash anyway. So this was as a twofold approach to um, keep the trash from being so unsightly as the first thing as you see walking in or walking out the beach. But I do agree that I don't think it's a one-size-fits-all, either for geographic areas or whatever. And what I'd suggest is, you know, to try it at one beach or like Egypt or whether and see how it works. I mean, one of the challenges we have in terms of service is we researched all the other beaches in the area to see, you know, what their policy were, discussed it with um, Sustainable Situate in terms of the approach, and they were in favor of it, and trying to get folks to be more responsible for their trash because it's a huge resource that we spend on just trash removal as opposed to freeing up, like you said, other resources. But you're paying fifteen to 18000 just for <coughs> trash removal. And this was seen as a way to, A, make it a little more unsightly because you're going to get the trash anyway. You're always going to get some degree of illegal. But I would just recommend to sort of pilot it one place and see how it works because I think there's some areas it may never work. Um, you know, we have beach bottle, um, Recyc not beach bottle, no. but uh, rec recycle bottle bottles, recycling yeah. things right beside them, um, and also working with the lifeguards to uh, at remind people to carry out, and we can do it by signage. Yeah, and to answer your question, ma'am, yeah. there will be two yeah. recycle bins at each receptacle also for, for recycling purposes. Did I see other hands up? Did anyone else have a question in the audience? Um, you want a motion? I think I can do some wording on this. Um, or do we want to have them come back? What time, yeah. time frame do you need? Had a question. Um, I think you could give us advice, and we'll go execute on it. How about looking at one or, B? Or whatever you'd like to do. I mean, I'm just throwing this out. I think the consensus that I'm hearing is maybe try it. Right. Maybe you could even try it at one beach for for the half the summer, and if it works, expand that. If it doesn't work, keep it to one beach. That'd be my nice thought. Or two. I think it, I think two. Egypt and Peggotty are going to probably be the easiest location-wise, and they're they're going to be the closest to the current barrels, so it's not that many more steps to get there. Um, I would recommend that we put more barrels at the other beach, because a lot of people actually do try and throw the trash away, but the thing's already full. So even if we just double the number of barrels, it'll, it'll at least get in a barrel instead of blowing around the sand. Any other comments? Or? The only reason why I suggested a motion, I, I was going to make a motion along all these lines, was if there's a motion provide to us, I was going to modify, do we need a motion because it's a policy or anything like that? Or can we just, it's the sense of the I board. Think it's really a policy that you're adopting. I think you just, you know. You're I wanted Al to talk to you in case, instead of unilaterally doing it, and it was dead on arrival, or if so you get calls. Sense of the board is fine. Trying to so do. Yeah. Then I'm good. So why don't you try it on Egypt and Peggotty? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
And before we get off beach, can I do a commercial? Um, beach stickers are for sale during normal business hours, Monday through Friday, in the Treasurer Collector's Office. There's also a kiosk in Town Hall to do self-serve. There's a kiosk at Situate High School by the Recreation Department to do self-serve. Please do it online, though. You can do it online and get your beach and transfer station stickers. You can get your transfer station and beach stickers, I think. Can you get beach stickers at the transfer station, too, or just transfer no, station? No. We're not, I don't think we're selling stickers at the transfer station. Right yeah, now. but you're going to be. And um, oh. so just... <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the memo? <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Al. But, um, <laughs> so, but, but really, and, and if the, for the reporters here, please try and get it online or please do it a mail-in because um, we, we really, really want to try to avoid that, that rush before the 4th of July weekend. And there's a grace period through mm -hmm. June 15th, so, but if you get it early, then that will help us. So if you have a sticker now, even though you can buy your new one, or you need to buy your new one now for next year, your current sticker is good through June 15th. And uh, in the past where it's only been available on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings or something, now at the treasurer's office, it's, it's uh, Monday through Friday at the uh, operating hours there. But there's more online and kiosks that you should do so you don't have to stand in line. Great. Thanks, Thank, you, Thank you, Thank you, Thanks, Al. Thank you, Al. Okay, moving on to item number seven, which is discussion of the Hawkers Peddlers policy. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Kim and was it you, Sheila, Trisha, who else was part of the group that looked at this? It's actually mostly Trisha and I and okay. Officer Thompson and Chief uh, Brian Stewart. Thank you all for doing this. This has uh, been an initiative of ours. We've got uh, many more people that are applying for um, licenses in town to sell their different goods and it was getting a little chaotic in terms of where people were going and how many people we wanted and, uh, and so forth and so on. So this group got together and analyzed it. They prepared a report for us um, with some recommendations. Um, who wants to? Um, if we could, I'd like Kim to come and present it because she's being very modest. She did about 98% of all this work. So um, I think that um, she should, most of our students should Kim? do it. Would you be for? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're still no on, typing, though. You're still on TV over there. Actually, Zach, can you get her and can she, can she, can we move the mic over? Because I don't know, can, can yeah, people have told me that sometimes they can't hear people. Sorry, Kim. No. Just that way people can hear you. So what we asked you to do is, is look at the current landscape, mm -hmm. see what we have, see how many licenses we have out there, and kind of analyze the policies that we currently have, which we may not be following as strictly as we could. And, um, and tell us what, what direction we should take on this. Well, the old policy um, was really last updated in 1999, so we've, uh, there's been a little bit of a shift um, in people um, applying for a Hawker Peddler's License. A lot more uh, what we found, or what really drove this was we had an influx of applications for um, mobile food um, service in the way of carts and uh, actual vehicles. Um, we, um, we looked at policies from the following towns, Amherst, Falmouth, Hingham, Provincetown, Dennis, and the city of Worcester. Uh, and it was very interesting. Uh, Trisha was nice enough to get, a, to get all of these uh, policies for these various towns. And we did very much want to look at other seaside towns to see what their situation was. We also took into account um, Mark Thompson, Officer Mark Thompson, did a lot of research uh, on mobile food service and really did a lot of the measuring um, of the different areas um, to, to, because we were going to, it became very evident as we received more applications that we were going to have to uh, look very carefully at footage from established restaurants and uh, other places. Uh, right now, and also I want to thank uh, Brian Stewart because he reviewed um, this draft policy that we're looking at tonight. Um, right now, I have uh, eight renewals um, that would, they would like to uh, be serving again this summer or during these good months. And I have uh, four uh, new 
vendors that are interested in um, food truck um, food trucks and uh, carts. Um, what became very clear when reviewing other towns' policies was a need for the town of Situate uh, to have all their hawker peddlers also have a state license. And uh, we feel that that's very important. Um, it ensures that the applicants are really thoroughly vetted. It's not, I mean, it's the, the state uh, license is around um, $62, <coughs> but there are a series of questions um, and answers that uh, they answers that must be given to a lot of questions. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, also, uh, one other thing we wanted to make sure of was that uh, our policy takes into account um, having uh, quarry checks done, that type of thing, um, especially with the vendors that are driving around um, and that we also have vehicle registrations, valid driver's license for all vendors that are selling um, and also we do understand that there are going to be certain um, license exceptions for the St. Patrick's Day Parade, Heritage Days, the annual carnival that people will not need necessarily a uh, town of situate license for that but they must have a state license for that. Um, also, something that we hadn't thought of and that came very clear is that our local vendors must have um, Massachusetts sales tax um, and or meals tax. Um, they must be paying to the DOR. We're not sure if that's been happening or not. Um, hopefully it has been. And um, specific and safe locations from which to sell fish and sell and shellfish, which is also something that we hadn't thought about before. If um, people are selling fresh fish from a cart or something like that, they have to, there's a whole nother license that they need for that. So those are all things that we looked at. Um, also, I would like to recommend, or the group would like to recommend, a new fee of $50 for the local, for this town of Situate, offer peddler's license. As you can imagine, there's a lot of paperwork, a lot of administrative work um, from our office that takes place, and that seems like a reasonable fee, and it's also comparable to other uh, town's uh, fees. Um, that's, that's sort of an overview. I don't know if you have any questions about that or whether you want to get into the nuts and bolts of the policy itself. Yeah, why don't we, we've all read, I mean, there's a comprehensive, probably about an eight-page report here um, that we've all taken a look at. Um, so why don't we, why don't we talk about the policy itself before we get into the actual locations of where we think people should go. Um, was it Officer Thompson that did yes. <coughs> this array where, um, you know, the policies are now that you should not be either 300 or 500 feet from an establishment that sells white goods. Mm -hmm. So um, we found establishments in the different communities and went out how far that would be in this, this um, area here. And we hold this policy to it. It also says everyone here that the selectmen can, can override that. But if we do hold that to the letter or the, the, the bylaw, you would not be able to do anything in situ at all. Um, you know, 500 feet from uh, Sands End Cafe in Hummerock basically covers most of the water. So, um, as it goes down in Cole Parkway and um, some of the other areas. So, you know, that's, if, if we can talk about the policy itself, and then we can get back to the locations of where we think things are going like that. Yeah, I, I think, it, and I thank Kim and everyone else that, that put this together. I know it's a, a lot of work. I think it's a good policy. It might have to be tweaked as we go along, as we know, exceptions always seem to arise. But looking at this at, uh, on the surface, it, it, if, if we discuss particular locations tonight uh, and get those squared away, I think this policy will hold us in pretty good stead. One question I have is that if, if a hawker ends up getting a state um, license, are they then subject to the local policy, which is, my understanding is when you go to, you know, you see the um, snack trucks that go to various places, um, like at the MBTA station, they don't come to town to get a hawker peddler's license from us. 
because they have a state license. So they're able to go pursuant to the state license. My understanding was anywhere. So my reason for asking that is, has we lo have we looked at that, town council looked at it. Number two, if that's the case, um, then fine, I'm fine with the policy. I'm just concerned that if we, we mandate that hawker peddlers here in town have to have a state license, we're in essence vitiating any type of control of them. So no, two, th chief, oh, go ahead. Wanna, two, two things and then one is um, yes and no. If you have a state hawker's license, then you don't have to go get a, a local license here for us. However, you do have to follow our local policy as to where you can go and there's some language in here about how you have to keep moving and stuff like that. What the long-term plan would be though is have you adopt this policy and then a year from now have it as a general bylaw. That's usually what most of the towns do. So then it has the full force and effect for violations because then the police department can do the non-criminal enforcement if somebody's actually violating the policy. So this would be your policy and then eventually we'd, most towns have it as a general bylaw. Yeah. Can I get clarification on that because I didn't understand that answer. So John's point is that if we require them to get a state, then they do not need to come before us? No. To get the... If you have a state hawker's license, you don't have to go to the local... So they wouldn't community. need to come before us anymore. But, but if our but bylaw says but you but can't... But then next year, if we put a bylaw in, even if they get a state, they would need to come before us? Hold on. I'm, I'm confusing people. Our local process is going to be, we won't even review your application unless you have a state hawker's or peddler's license. So you have to go to the state, get that approval, and when that's approved, then you'll have to comply with the policy that we have here as far as where you can hawk and all those other regulations that Kim has. But so this policy puts a limit, for example, on the numbers right. and whether we adopt those or not, but let's just say we do. How would we be able to enforce that limit if there's a number here for six in one area and 50 hawkers get state permit because um, the state's not going to regulate the number at our beach right but you can regulate the number of hawkers that you're going to allow in any particular area but if they don't come thing. before us how are we going to allow them or not I think I think what I'm hearing is we, we may not have people coming before us seeking a hawker peddler's license if they go to the state they're going to say I don't need to need to go to town but right. what they will have to do is they're going to have to adhere to the policy or what ultimately will be a general bylaw saying if you want to go to town property and you want to be able to go down to Cole Parkway, you want to go to right. the lighthouse or whatever, you have to adhere to the policy, which means we are limiting it only to six or eight or ten or four, whatever the number is. So then they have to get in line. But they can still come into town, for example, during any of the parades um, yeah, and yeah, be able to march through it. They have everything <coughs> to do it. They don't have to come before us. They don't have to get their license. So it's basically we may end up losing <coughs> maybe the fee of $50 if they get their state because they're not going to want to come down us if they don't need to go to a specific location in town. Chief, do you have anything to add to that? I was just going to say the state law does make a lot of exceptions. <coughs> oh. so, so you could <coughs> overlay. <coughs> okay. Oh, that's yeah, good. So okay. if you, excuse me, if you look on page, um, at the bottom of page two of the actual policy, it lists one through four what each person must do that wants to hawk and pedal in the town of Citrus. And then you'll see more details on how to go about that. But thank you, Chief Stewart. So, that is true. So they so would have to, with, with us, so the answer is then to John's question is with a state license, so they would still need to come across. Yeah. Is that the way you understand it? Yes, and I think the maximum fee That's is $50. That's what I like. I personally, I like it. I like that. Do you have, sir, anything to add yes. to that? Yeah. Uh, Joseph Spindola, 24, Rebecca Road, uh, J.P.'s Hot Dog Express. And my understanding of the state license and the local ordinance is if you, everybody has to have that state license. I didn't realize anybody could come before you and just get the local license. The state requires you to have that license. Now, if I want to bring my state license and my business in your, uh, your town here, and I want to set up anywhere on town property, I have to come before you and I have to get your permission. However, if I want to come here and go, say, over to the River Club or to a venue where that owner permits me to vend on his essentially private property, then I don't need to come before you. Gotcha. Okay. 
Or state property. That, no, you right, state, state, state property, right, yes. Right, the license. Makes sense. Or St. Patrick's Day, Heritage Days, where you get all your balloons, they can just come. On that, I think if I wanted to move to another area over and above the area that I had permission for, I can apply to for like a an event permit or right. a caterer's permit for a certain fee that would permit me access to that area for that short time period. Thanks for um, That answers my question. That's good. I mean, that, that was my concern too, because last time we discussed it, we thought that that overall would be right. Yeah. <coughs> um, any other questions in terms of the locations, just the policy in general? I think it's great that it's formalized. There's many more layers to it. You just can't come before us and, and start vending the next day. Um, there's certain things that are, are subject, not are, that are not subject to it, like fruits and vegetables and farm things, charitable purposes. <coughs> um, although the bylaw, the way I read it, if we go by these grids. Policy. Excuse me? Not a bylaw, right? Policy. Uh, policy. policy. Okay, yeah. policy. Um, you know, it kind of eliminates most of the spots just by the fact that it says you can't do it within 500 feet of an establishment, right? Mm -hmm. Did you want to speak to that, Joe? Yeah, we, we briefly discussed that this afternoon. I just happened to be in the office and nothing, and, and thought that maybe the number 300 feet, which is which, which is what on the, what color is that on the map, Kim? It's still some green. The it's a smaller circle. It's a smaller circle, obviously. The bottom one. Yeah. But uh, even, they're all very tiny. Yeah. Yeah. But even so, on the sand ends one, it's still covers I, the whole. I looked at yeah. sand hills. Uh, so the Sid Hummer Art CNNs, and I think the 300 foot circle, and I'm not sure of this, takes it to the beach. There's a small section, and I think that I think that's beach. Yeah, it looks. You know what I mean? I think it's a pathway going up, a sand pathway going up to the road, but I think that's beach. Someone can correct me. Yes, it is, Joe. It that is, is beach. beach. Yeah. So that would that 300 feet would take it to the beach. I think my point is it that it, if you beach. keep that in at 300 or 500, it's still going to require everyone to come before us for the guideline may be granted by the, you know, there's very few peop places people aren't going to want to go that aren't already commercial within 300 feet of a commercial place. If we looked at all of them, Tony? I mean, no, well, just the pictures here. I mean, oh, see Sand Hills. What would that do to if there are people in San Hills? Dad, sir, it's actually um, at Scotty's. Yeah. So Scotty's. Do we have it? It's not. No, we don't. But the parking lot, you wouldn't be able to. I don't think be able to no. sell in the parking lot. You'd be able to sell Lighthouse. But the parking lot would be prohibited. Which is fine that they come before us anyways, because then we just have a better tracking of the goal. Um, if we're only allowing how many? Well, she's suggesting. The committee is suggesting. I'm sorry. The six. committee is suggesting six. <coughs> six and four. Six and four, is that right, Kim? Yeah, that, I mean, that's not an unworkable number if they had a committee. So I know we're, we're, see, we're doing that now, I think. Right. Well, we already have eight yeah. and four. That, that doesn't include the mobile ones, is that correct? Like the um, ice cream trucks? Um, what I did was uh, on the, the final page was um, we sectioned it off into six mobile food service offer peddlers which would actually be um carts or it, it could be a, it could be a, a motorized vehicle um, depending on what they're serving but then down below for frozen dessert or confection offer peddlers which are actually ice, i guess you could say ice cream vendors so it's just a, a random no i mean there is lots behind the number that you don't want to have so many people you know tripping over each other or you know so currently there's eight, and there's four on a waiting list. So we have 12 people that want to do it, and we're suggesting maybe only offering 10. Mm -hmm. and, and your six go, I assume you would want one in Egypt, one in Begadie, and you kind of dole out each of the six locations, and right. each person would have one. I know there have been other locations, like the baseball fields. What was the one over on, um, over by the beach, the fruits? Oh, the fruit market doesn't, doesn't apply. Well, who's the person that sold fruit, uh, vegetables? Uh, yeah, over Steverman over on uh, Sand Hills. Yeah. Um, so I know the base. I know there was one group that wanted to sell it uh, as like uh, Greenbush, or, or maybe even uh, Roach Fields. But yes, 
just a comment on that page. Um, if we could say we'll allow a total of six Whole Foods, so then you have a listing there, and it says Minot Beach parking lot, and it says small lot only. Particularly out out of towners might not know what the small lot actually mm -hmm. refers to. Mm -hmm. Maybe give it an address or you know adjacent to street number or across the street from street number or something like that so it's just a little more specific to someone who's like driving around and trying to find what the small lot is and the bigger lot is and the big lot's actually kind of small too so you know <laughs> one question Kim I'm, Kim I and I'm trying to read it trying to find it here uh, I can't see it to you can help you if it's in here I know it's I know it's not um, a hawker peddler would not be allowed to sell items of a similar nature as to any establishment that was in the 300 feet. That, <coughs> there's some, you know, it's actually right. on page one at the bottom, uh, under point. exceptions to this guideline may be granted by the board so arranged. Okay, so someone selling uh, uh, hot dogs could not sell at the 300 feet of some of the establishments sell hot dogs, or right. pizza. Right. Someone couldn't sell pizza from a truck if there was a pizza establishment within mm -hmm. 300 feet. Right. John, page two, the clause is, may not sell or offer for sale any goods, wares, or merchandise. Um, Wait, no, that's not it. Oh, sorry, Two, section two, bottom. Similar wares. Okay. But okay. similar wares, I mean, I don't know that you have to match hot dog to hot dog. You know, hot dog to hamburger. You know, if you're selling yeah. chips or cheetos yeah. or Doritos. Doesn't necessarily have the exact food, but someone was selling. Uh, I would imagine any establishment is going to feel competition from any vendor selling food. You know, as we've heard from, from people out there. So, you know, it's that whole question between you know, capitalism and letting people, the market bear and So basically, if we adopt this <coughs> kind of policy, it seems to me that we won't have Parker Peddler in Humrock. No, all the exceptions. The parking lot would be the... Is that the parking lot that's just outside the yeah. circle? Yeah. And it's not even the front part of the parking lot. It's the, it's the, it's the river side of the parking lot. Well, I, I would probably say if that were the case, we'd have to carve out the exception and say the parking lot, the parking lot yeah. and, you know, and... and because otherwise I saw, I did the same, I drew it. I'm like, that means it have to be in the back end of the parking lot in the basketball court. That wouldn't, that wouldn't work. So. All right. All right. I just you know if we're going to, you know, say a specific thing. Yeah. We, we, we can cut out, the, cut out that. All right. Okay. So it would be allowed, right. it, it would be allowed within that parking lot. I think we're going to have to do that for almost every space. Right. Right. Why, and a couple other questions, minor beach parking lot. What did, where did we allow vendors to park their goods there? I know you probably couldn't stop in the middle of the road. Glades Road is, you know, a very busy road in the summer, but did we allow any hawkers in mind before? Not ice cream truck stops. Not that I know of. So Just the ice cream trucks. <laughs> Just ice cream. Yeah. Stops right at the opening. So this new policy is saying that the women would only allow, if someone wanted to sell hot dogs, would only allow them to do it in one of the parking lots that's kind of Behind. Well, I think what we do is for every one of these six locations, we'd say, here's where you go. Okay. All right. So, uh, yes. That, uh, that needs to be specified. Um, exact location must have the approval of the chief of police or his designee. No, I like that. I just, it's, it's hard to, you know, if you're going to stick to this, it's hard to do both. So. Yeah, I don't think you can. I think, right. I think this is the policy that keeps someone that comes with a state license only in violation of our bylaws. I think or our policy right now. Right. You know, what what we'd have to do is where we say, here's where you go. You can go to Peggy Parking Lot. You can go in this, this spot. Um, right. I'm gonna. A couple of people had questions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Joan Crowley, Creek Cane Drive, and Sister. Um, we sell signs at the beginning of Cole Parkway. We have for years now. Would this state license pertain to us? We don't have food at all. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think so. 
Like the hardware sold, sold signs should have a problem, but for example, she doesn't. Why couldn't we allow that yeah. Yeah, to yeah. continue? But I mean, but I'm saying if, if Doug Smith sold signs, then there, there could be a problem. No, but but she still needs to come before us. She just has to right. come before us. Right. But I think it's it's not just food. It's uh, what was the word in your Goods Wares. and wares. Yeah. Why the state license, though? Well, the, by virtue of mandating people have state license, there are certain requirements that the state mandate that you have to have. For example, quarry check, which is a background check on people to make sure that they have any criminal background. So we can't necessarily mandate it, but if we say you have to have a state license, we are ensuring ourselves that people meet those criteria, which are a higher standard. So we're trying to protect the people of Sidgwick by doing that. And you get a tax ID number, which means you got to pay taxes on it. Okay. And, oh, I'm not saying you don't, but I'm just saying there are other people who probably try to come in and, and just kind of take more of a passive approach to it. So that's why we're trying to, like, What's God bless, to make it a little more stringent, but also protecting the people situated. And, Kim, that, that would be a situation where that probably wouldn't be one of the ten food people that we're talking right. about. So that would be an outside, you know, an exception, I would I, sure. think. It, but exactly what Sean just said, if the hardware store was selling handmade signs or something well, they like that, then it would be a problem. But the policy specifically says mobile food service for the number of six and frozen dessert infection. Okay. So just to your point, man, your, your sentence will need to come forth if you're not one of the ten. Yes, sir. Uh, would I have to bring this you just have to say Paul Brown, Kane Drive? I'm sorry. Uh, would I have to register with Brian for, to uh, reestablish my location at Old Pathway for the sign? Yes. Okay. Yes, Jim. Hi, uh, Marilyn House, Sands End Cafe. I just wanted a little clarification then on uh, if an issue, a license is issued for a hawker in my area, would that hawker peddler now be relegated to the parking lot, the Hummerock Beach parking lot? which is where the stickers are issued, which in this case would be on River Road next to the Sidgwick Fire Department. Would that be correct? No, that hasn't been decided yet. That's what we're talking about right now. So okay. we, we would have to find, for every one of these locations that Kim has identified, we'll find the space, the space where they can vent. And that has not been decided yet. Okay. Um, just as clarification, there are other areas outside of that circle that I suppose <coughs> Practically, they, they couldn't, they wouldn't just neighborhoods and everything else. But what I think Tony's saying is that actual parking lot, if they can find that other spot outside of that circle, they probably can do it there. Is that correct? Yeah, but we're only about <coughs> six. We're only about six, yeah. So if they want to go in the Hummerock area, then they'd have to come, we'd have to designate the spot. And it would have to be outside that. No, we could put it anywhere we want. We have the exception to put it anywhere. But because of the policy, for instance, a state person can't come <coughs> here because it violates our policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to, I think for these six or seven, however many spots we go, we're going to choose and say, okay, this one's here. Or we could say it goes at the end of the beach like it was last year. We could do whatever we want. Or we could say you can go anywhere, just not within the circle. Right. right. And I think we figured out that that's omitting most of the... I agree, but I'm just talking in terms of process. Okay. I think, think about this, uh, Robin King, 130 Burger Road. Um, what would be the term of the actual license itself? I hear a lot of seasonal, but would, would it be annual, annual, or at the end of the actual <coughs> summer? Well, so from from April to October, with the exception of March for St. Patrick's Day, Robin. So okay. that's that's the term of it, with, with a renewal being, I think it's November 1st. November 1st. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. once you finish, Come November, you want to re-up. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't, you lose. Your, if you have a spot, if you don't renew by that time period, then you lose that spot. You go down to the bottom of the list, and anybody who's, who's been waiting on the list then and you would have to wait. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just a follow-up. It's not renewal by right. Correct. I mean, it's up to us. Correct. I, mean, I think you get your. Um, you know, if, if you do a terrible job, then. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I one of the th yeah. Priority here for people who've been doing doing a good job, 
I agree. No, I agree, but I just want to make sure. What, with the state license renewal, they're going to check to make sure the sales tax, the meals tax, and all that's being paid before they even come to us. So it's not automatic renewal because there might be other issues in play that prevent them from. That the state catches. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Norton. If, if we. Um, if we can change these circles, I suppose, is what I'm saying. If we can adjust these circles, what is the sense of even having circles? That was my question. Yeah, I don't think you really need <laughs> I think the circles are just an indication of what the current policy is so that no. nobody could come into any of space in here unless it's one that we told them to to vend. So, for instance, I'll take Sands End for a example yep. no one can put it down there because it's not within the circle but we could say you can go over here even though it is inside the circle so the, so the policy if we didn't have the circle then they could go wherever they want so we're saying as of right now this you cannot you will use the engines against you they cannot go within the circle unless they come to us and say can I go here can I go here and then we would have to say yes or no, or we might suggest the parking lot. Well, one of the things is when we looked at all the <coughs> other communities' policies, they had radiuses. So we took that, those suggested radiuses and plotted them to see what their impact would be. There's absolutely going to be situations where maybe your radius isn't 300, maybe it's 200, or maybe it is 300, but you're going to do a specific location because there's just no way, you know, you'd be in Cohasset if the 300 radius was that. So it's allowed you to have that flexibility. A lot of the towns had that radius with different degrees, and three and five right. were, th that's why we did it from a starting point. And then when we plotted it, to Tony's point, it showed that it was eliminating a lot of the area where people could do any concession. So that's in the board's discretion. This is a follow-up, a quick, yeah. so just so I understand it, Nobody can, no, no one can sell a Huck and Peddler, similar items within a 500 or a 300, whatever that number we end up with, unless they get permission from the board. Unless they come before the board and the board says, yes, you can go inside that 500 feet. Site specific. Providing it's on town property. Providing it's on town property. Of course, yeah. Of course, town property. We can put it, yeah. Well, the only point, though, again, to this gentleman's point, if Someone on private property allows you to hawk, you can do it. Right. Sure. If you have a state license. If you point. have a state license, yeah. But I, I want to make sure, though, we are going to have a radius. Yeah. Okay. And so the radius, for example, just using this Hummer Rock as an example, the wording would be, let's just use 300 because it's the smaller one, just for conversation. Yeah. We're allowing outside the radius and we're allowing inside the radius, I mean in theory, at the parking lot. That's a typical type thing we're looking at. So you still do need the radius, yeah. right? See, I, what I assume we're gonna right. do is there's gonna be yeah. there's these six locations. So someone's gonna come before us, and I'm just randomly picking a name here. Um, we had a license last year. Just pick out the name Jack's Smith. Ice, or Make it the up. Hot Smith. Dog Express. And they're gonna say, I want Hummer Rock. And we say, okay, your location is Hummer Rock. And then we say, okay, here's where you can do it in Hummer Rock. Anywhere outside this circle or in the corner of this parking lot or in front of the beach. You know, that's what we could say. Right. And then someone else is going to come in and you're going to have Cole Parkway or you're going to have Egypt Beach. And the same thing would be anywhere outside the circle or at these three designated spots. Yes? Excuse me. Um, the the wording um, at the bottom of the um, first page, exceptions to this guideline may be granted by the board of selectmen, was honestly put in because you do have a couple of vendors that you've got a grand, you possibly have a grandfather situation. I would imagine, sure. exactly to your point, Tony, that any new applicants, um, you are going to be looking at that radius pretty, pretty carefully, if at all possible. But you do have a situation where you have some people that may or may not wish to grandfather. Yeah, so the exceptions might be spatial as well as mm -hmm. refer to the number of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I I don't think that we have to set the individual locations and that, I think what you have to do is we're gonna set the policy that we're gonna give out two, four, six, eight, ten of these things. Then I 
Kim, you'll have some sort of system where I see the vendors in the room right now where they would apply and what they'd list which spots they wanted? Well, you do have a situation right now where uh, people who had licenses in 2011 renewed their licenses as they were supposed to in, um, in November of, or December of 2011. Mm -hmm. And since this uh, new proposal and new policy was pending, Board asked that you know those just be held right now. So I, I do have these eight renewals in place right now. So do you know where they want to go? Uh, I do know. Yes, I do. But Mr. Chair, this is sort of a separate issue. Don't, don't we need to set the policy first, and then we can consider right, those? At some point, these people want to start. Right. I, I, right. I agree, so but I just want to make sure we yeah. have a policy that we can right. then accept them into or not. Right. That was my, my yeah. point before. Yeah. <clears throat> Kim, out of those people that want to renew are there do you see any conflicts and I, then I'll stop there I'm not going to ask more detail but I, I do there are, there are two locations for which you see the uh, the radii and uh, radius drawing and our map and for Cole Parkway and for uh, Hummer Rock there there are you know things that need to be looked at very definite with the circle so they'll put, uh, those are the only two that I, I know of right now. Um, All right, that's, so I, I'll, I'll move the Board of Selectmen vote to adopt Operational Policy 53-12. Do you want to change it from 300 to 500, or do you want to keep it? I think we, do that, we can do that on a case-by-case -case basis, because we have exceptions. I mean, if you want to change 300, I don't, I don't care, but we're going to be doing that on a case-by-case -case basis anyways. It says 500 now. I'd feel better with 300. Okay. Yeah, right. I would, um, would be mine. Move the board select and vote to adopt <coughs> operational policy 53-12 with the um, change of the bottom of page one to say 300 feet, and on the top of the last page some clarification about the specific location of a small lot at Lion Beach Park. Can, can you add to that, Rick? to say that we, or does he need to, Tony, that we can make exceptions to the 300 foot It's already there in the policy. policy. Yeah. It's already in the policy. We're not going to put in the motion a specific, All right. are we? Is that what you're suggesting? What? What did you say at the end? I don't remember. Clarification on Just to address. modify the policy. On the mine at street address. To 300 and just to seek and to add clarification of the location of the mine at oh, Beach oh, Park. Oh, mine it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. No. <laughs> just before I, may I? Again, I'll go back to what I brought up earlier about selling similar items. It's in there. It's in there. It's right there. So we're accepting that. For the purpose, they may not sell similar items. May and not sell similar items. Unless we similar allow ways. them to. Unless we allow them. So they cannot sell similar items within that circle unless they come to us and we say you can sell similar items inside of that circle. Yeah, I guess, and I'm going to vote for it, but I, you know, just sometimes we have a policy, it seems like we have as many, we can just about change anything in this policy we want. That's right. And I guess I have to say what kind of a policy is this? <laughs> well, it's a deep, I think, it's really I think to answer that, I think that's a very good point, but it, it sort of sets out there, so someone's, someone's interested in selling and being a hawker in this town, and take a look at the policy, they sort of get the sense of the town where things are generally allowed, where things generally are not allowed, the general numbers. It's not 50 vent hawkers vendors and all this sort of thing. And they understand the procedure about needing to go to the state and then come before us and make yeah, their pitch. I understand all that, but the bottom line again is the policy is only as good as the selectmen want it to be. Cor so Correct. It's more along the lines of what you can't do as opposed to what you can do. But what, yeah. Exactly, but as far as what, we, what they can do, we can change that too. If they can't do it today, they can do it tomorrow if we say so. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess You're I. You're not new to this game. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> but I am new to policy as being as loose as this one. That's, I think. I, I, this is new to me. And I say loose, I mean, uh, it's, certainly it's, very, it's very flexible, which at times can be a blessing, but at times can be a curse. So. I think I, you can, well, again, this is a wholesale change in terms of going to the state, getting the license, making all the requirements, isolating the locations, excluding 
two or three dozen streets, and then I think you can probably tweak it after you live with it for a bit. The Corey check. I think the, the, the Corey check is very important. important. Should have. People dispensing. So there's, there's a motion one. out there. Right. But before we, the only other question that I have on here is, well, there's two things. We say we're grandfathering everyone from last year on a case-by-case -case basis. So we're really not, because we can, I guess. But uh, the other thing is, I think the six licenses are fine because there's six locations. But for instance, if another location, like if, a if somebody wanted to sell at the baseball fields and we wanted to allow them to, then I think there would be, it's okay to have seven. Mm -hmm. I don't think you want more at a location. Like for instance, uh, someone vends at the football games right. over here in the fall. You know, so I wouldn't want to limit six when if it's a clearly another location that's becoming part, like someone may want to vend at the uh, okay. farmer's market. You know, you can, you can amend. You, I mean, policies are amended on a right. regular basis, so you, you certainly can do that. If, if I mean, these were just um, some suggested areas yeah. that were thought of, um, but certainly more can be recommended, or the policy can be amended. Or, you know. Additionally, if I may, I, I agree that it it says there's six licenses and there's six locations, but on on my part, I could see if. Two, two different vendors come up, and one selling hot dogs and the other is selling signs. candy bars. Signs. Right? Yeah. Well, signs is not, maybe there's no competition, so there's, you know, two, two completely different food products. They might both want to do Egypt Beach and Peggotty Beach. So there's two of them for two. So I, I it, there's, there's ways we can, there's ways we, but we, we don't, don't want to get a retail center at Egypt. Well, yes. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I agree, but that's, but that's where, but seriously, that's where, that's where it comes up with us when we see we've established these deadlines, right? And so we see the palette, literally, being presented to us of who's interested this year and who's doing it again, and we can make these decisions along that because we don't want to set up, as you say, a retail center and all that sort of stuff. So that's exactly the point of a policy, and that's exactly why we're doing Enhancing it. Enhancing the experience. Yeah. Well, I think the meat of the policy is, I mean, the, the only part anyone cares about is what we're talking about now, but that's only a minute part of all the paperwork that's here, which is solidifying it. So I don't know if we just want to make this, the six not hard-coded, and, you know, maybe put something unless a, another location comes, a viable location comes up. I, Why don't you say a maximum number to be determined. I really think it's important that you might not know what that number is, but <coughs> I, I think you seriously want to consider how many of these you want in the town. I mean, in the short time I've been here, they've tripled. And those are other, you know, vendors in addition to all the retail establishments and other services we have already for 12 month a year vendors. Yeah, I, I think I'm fine having a, t a maximum number, but I don't want to just say and have a maximum number because then it doesn't send a clear signal out to the community and then it's going to wax and wane each year. We can change this each year if we need to, but I think there's real value in having a specific number down there. I don't care if it's a, for the top one. I don't care if it's four, six, or eight, but let's pick a number. Well, why don't we just say unless another acceptable um, location um, arises. arises that the board votes on. That's fine, but I just think that's redundant because it says exceptions to this guideline might be granted by the board of selectmen. So that's already in there. Yeah, but it says a total of six. But there's exceptions can we do that and just, I, whatever. I just think it's redundant because there's exceptions all, on every aspect of this policy and the board of selectmen are the ones that decide that. So if one year there's eight, we can do it. What do you think, Mr. Attorney? Well, I see the conflict. I mean, there is an exception to the rule, which gives us deference to be able to determine it, but we are saying that we're going to allow a total of six at these sites and a total of four um, um, uh, fro for frozen desserts. So it's my reading of that is that you got a total of four, and at least at these sites, a total of six. So I would suggest we just put a quick sentence in there that says, unless another acceptable location is agreed upon, and then move on. I, that would make sense because I had written down like the old snackery site, site on Hadley Road. Somebody wanted to do something there, or 
the um, right. ball field, <coughs> central field. You know, Move the board of selectmen. Locations. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. I'm just saying I think we have to have a little, um, a little relief valve. May I try another motion, Mr. Chair? Great. Move the board select and vote to adopt operational policy 53-12 as presented with the following modifications that at the bottom of page one, the 500 feet be changed to 300 feet. <coughs> On the last page that the, uh, which specific Minot Beach parking lot is, is uh, more specifically identified and that the wording be added that says, uh, or at additional locations as needed, or as <coughs> as agreed upon by the Board of Selectmen. How's that, Kim? That's fine. Anyone want to second that? Second that. Second by Mr. Danny. Further discussion? Yes, ma'am. Hi. I, I would just like to make a statement. Um, I'm not sure what is going to happen with respect to the Hummer Rock area and the issuance of a Hawker Peddler's License. But I would simply like you to take into consideration that in the past two years you have issued a license to somebody who is selling similar wares within 260 feet of my established business. And I would very much like you to consider the impact that it has on my year-round business to have the seasonal operation for a $50 Hawker Peddler's license. And I would re respectfully ask you to think about the impact it does have on my business before issuing it again. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous, five to zero. Okay. So the next step would be for Kim, you to kind of put a matrix together who wants to go where, and then they'll come before us one at a time? Yes, for the, re for the renewals. For the renewals. Or, or, yeah. After they get their state license, right? After you get the state license. So if you're in the room and you have one of these, just talk to Kim, get on our next agenda, and we can talk about getting you up and going as the weather gets good and the license goes in effect next week. Mr. Chair, there's an additional motion under this agenda item. Yep. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to set the fee for a Hawker Peddler license at $50. Second. Um, further discussion? Any, I mean, we're, we're kind of imposing that fee of them to go get another $60 one from the state. So it went from 15 to 50. I know we can go that high, but do we want to go that high? I think my feeling on that, not being involved in any of these discussions, but regardless if they need a state permit or not, we have to deal with it. Our police chief is involved. Our town people, town uh, employees are involved. There's a, very, there's a cost to the town, regardless if the state has to issue a license or not. And that cost is a real cost, and we need to cover those costs. And so I assume that this $50 fee is commensurate with what other towns are doing. So that's my feeling on it. How much is the state? I don't have a problem with it other than, other than that they're also going to get a business certificate, and that's another cost from the clerk's office, right? Yeah, what is it? What does she charge? Bucks, $5? Uh, $5, $10? Like yeah. Uh, it just, well, there's more costs. So. Just the point. I mean, the, the state charges 62 and I'll guarantee you they spend a lot less time on this than we do. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot less, a lot less time in our town personnel. Uh, if we think the eight licenses at 50 bucks, the $500 we get from this isn't paying the, the gas for the chief to drive down there. Well, uh, we might suggest via a letter that the state lower their fees. Let's write one of the MBTA, too. Yeah. <laughs> but I, no, I, my point is I think we were a lot of people involved in, 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 in enforcing this and trying to put this together. Uh, okay. I, I think $50, $50 is yeah, I seconded it. I didn't think it was too bad. Uh, just quickly, yes, ma'am? Separate. Check is totally Absolutely. Okay. It's a criminal records check. Chief Stewart. That's actually what I was going to say. We actually sign off from the state license to I, I, I did two today. 
All right, so we've got a motion. Second, I, I do have the math here. It's still fast. And as far as my understanding is that when I submit for a renewal on my mass chocolate tablet license, I don't believe that they even look to double check that you have Yes, the they do. Meals tax. They do. They'll get a report from DOR. They do. Okay. And in answer to your question, Joe, yes, the state is much faster because I've submitted my, I put it in the mail on a Monday and I've received the on Friday. Which means uh, which, they might be faster, which means an auto work, a lot of work probably didn't go into it. <laughs> it was probably get it here and send it out here. Yeah, how fast is it taking to they cash the check? Back. They get their money. Okay. okay. Um, we have a motion for a $50 increase in fees and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Four to one. Um, okay. So we move on. Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you for coming in. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Kim, to you and Tricia and the committee. <coughs> Kim. Item uh, 7 Kim, a. good job. Thank you. Yes, Kim. I'm going to step off. <laughs> Item 7A is a uh, vote to ratify the Public Employee Committee Agreement. Get the doors, Joe. Um, You just see if it was noisy, that's all. My office door is open. Um, just, just for the noise, that's all. Thanks. Um, this uh, negotiations have been going on for 30 days now, actually, I think a little bit longer than that, between um, the Public Employee Committee and um, the town in terms of the health care, um, and back and forth with us as well. And I'm happy to announce that the two sides have come to an agreement and have found a. Um, I guess mutually acceptable um, plan for the health care. I don't know how much detail we can go into it, but there's uh, options for um, the uh, town employees um, that keeps them in their same health plan and gives them two separate options in terms of deductibles, co-pays, and that sort of stuff. Um, there's a lot of back and forth, and I think uh, the whole board feels comfortable with where it ended up. Um, Tricia, do you have anything to add to that? Um, just a few. Um, there was a unanimous vote of um, the Public Employee Committee Group, which is made up of representatives from all the town's unions. Um, I really want to commend the 12 folks that uh, participated in our five meetings, um, especially the chair of that group, Jamie Ford, who's uh, representative of the Situate Teachers Association. Um, I think all the members work really hard. Um, the negotiations were conducted with a great amount of mutual respect and professionalism. Um, this isn't uh, an agreement that makes everybody happy, but I think um, it benefits both sides. And it represents um, some concerns um, uh, communicated to us by employees in terms of what they want to see for health care and what uh, their new contribution should be, as well as um, what the town was seeking to do in terms of the tool it was given by the legislature to look at its rising health care costs. And it's a three-year agreement and provides um, for reimbursements to employees for various procedures, as well as um, administration of uh, flexible spending accounts for employees who didn't have them to help them budget for any new costs they anticipate. And, and continues for three years. And I know Barry's here from the fire department if you want to add anything. But um, again, it was a unanimous agreement and was ratified by them yesterday. And your vote will um, close the period. And included in that, although the, the um, insurance policy itself changes in terms of copays and all that sort of stuff, but there's hundreds of thousands of dollars of mitigation money um, that's. Right, copays and no deductibles, which was something that was very important to the members of the committee, which the board was agreeable to. Great. Further, any discussion from the board? Just, Any just. Board? One second. Just, just to go. Good. Go ahead, Barry. Um, Barry Shane, fourteen Oakley Road. Um, I represent the firefighters on the tech board. Um, we got here to rehash the last thirty days, but uh, um, we, we really hoped there, there could have been some other options with this whole thing. Um, it was a unanimous vote. Um, how do we get there? The town's initial, what we voted on was better than the town's initial proposal. Uh, but when we boil it all down, 
when the, when the board first voted on this, potentially it was there were going to be savings on both sides. And in the finished product, the savings for the town, we estimate the amount of $383,000 over three years. But on the town side, uh, on the employee side, um, employees and retirees will pay an additional out of pocket uh, close to three quarters of a million dollars. So point of order, this was a mutually negotiated um, agreement which both sides are responsible for supporting in good faith. And I don't want to get into numbers that um, are not accurate. Okay. Do I still have a floor? Uh, not if you're going to continue on that path. We have a unanimous agreement and it's on the floor right. for the board to ratify. Do you have anything to comment on that's... Well, I, I wanted to finish my comment, but it's, right. if I can make one commentary, it's difficult explain to your members how health care was once a benefit and now potentially it's going to hinder them financially. Mr. Chair? Yes. May I say something? Yes. Um, I was going to make this comment independent of Mr. Shea's comment before he said that. I had my hand raised. So I just wanted to thank everybody involved in negotiations. Tricia, who was uh, negotiating on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and with our strong support. And um, I also wanted to congratulate all the members of the Public Employee Committee. And I, um, Tony or Tricia, one of you said, you know, all the unions were present, and I'm not going to read all the names of the individuals, but I was very impressed at the breadth of the, the workers that are covered by um, these uh, 10 or whatever it is. But Situate Teachers Association, retiree designate, cafeteria workers, police officers, fire department, custodians, uh, laborers district, uh, the SEIU, um, two different chapters of the SEIU representing various people, town hall and so on, school secretaries, school aides and so on. This is a very broad spectrum that's uh, a great agreement for, um, for, for everybody. And when you look at the numbers that are given at the end in terms of the number of eligible people, uh, this is a, there's 616 total eligible union members that are affected by this uh, agreement. Um, as Tricia and many people have said already, it's unanimous, and I think I just wanted to drive home the fact that this is this is not a small thing. This is a, um, a town-wide, school-wide agreement, and I think it's a very strong, um, positive step forward that uh, when the end of the day, and of course with negotiations, there's ups and downs on all sides and all people involved, but there is a unanimous vote, and I think it's an excellent outcome. Just to point out uh, one or two things. This isn't a municipality. This isn't a town of situate issue. It's, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not the cities and towns of the Commonwealth. It's not the cities and towns of the country. It's, it's a national issue, not only dealing with municipalities, but dealing with, with banks, dealing with hospitals, dealing everyone that employs people and everyone that's employed by these institutions are facing the same problem. It's not a municipal health issue. It is a health insurance issue. It's the cost of health insurance in this country. Whether you be a public employee or you work in the private sector, everybody's affected. Everybody is paying more than they paid five years ago. Everyone's paying more than they paid a year ago. Employees are paying more than they've paid a year ago, more than they paid five years ago. Employers and employees. So it's, 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 it's something that, that the whole country is facing. The whole country is trying to work uh, uh, to come up with a solution that's beneficial to, to both the employer and the, and the employee. Uh, and hopefully that, that, that our goal 30 days ago, or whatever it was, was to come up with a, with a policy uh, that would meet those guidelines, try to be as fair as we could to everybody. We recognize that the beginning of the negotiations, uh, and that's what they were negotiations, let's not keep that, lose track of that. Uh, the beginning of the negotiations uh, were far different than the last meeting you had. Uh, both sides came a long way. Both sides made some concessions. That's what negotiations are all about. But again, I'll just repeat, it's, it's not a town of situate issue. It's not a town of Cohasset issue. It's a municipal, uh, it's, it's a national health care problem. And, it's, and that's the problem that has to be solved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good point. Sean? I just want to, Joe, that was very well put. I just want to say that <clears throat> as long as I've served on the board that there hasn't been a more sensitive issue, per, you know, um, that literally, you know, 
I would lay awake at night thinking about this very issue since the train. So we met as a five of us, we met two of us, all Barry, all to come up to speed so I could learn it. It was like every town employee worked for me personally, just like the rest of you guys. So I, you know, we put a lot of effort into it and like Joe said, tried to do the best for everybody. That's it. So do we need a, uh, need a motion, motion to ratify? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to approve, I want to make sure I'm on the right one here. Yeah, vote to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Town and Public Employee Committee pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 32B, Sections 21 to 23, and CMR 52.00 to 52.07, effective July 1, 2012 through June 30th, 2015. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It is a four to zero. Mr. Danny Hamstein. Recused. Recused, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, move on to item number eight, which is an assignment of the articles for the annual town meeting, which is coming up on April 9th. Um, there's 23 of them here. I, I did have... Uh, and two of them are, are cumbersome. The uh, capital plan, uh, number four, number five. Typically, we don't do, or, or I'll do. And then, um, <laughs> big difference. <laughs> um, and which one called? Uh, CPC. Where's CPC? Yeah, right there, 16. sixteen. So I don't know if we want to break those up into components or have one person do all of them. Well, the way we've done CPA in the back in the past is much quicker than when it first came <coughs> online is you pretty much do a very quick summary through it all and I'm the liaison and I've been doing that in the past and if you guys don't mind I don't mind doing it again okay. so why don't we do um, does the chairman typically do the first couple is that the way it's uh, uh, most it does all of them actually <laughs> <laughs> I think so or allocates right first five. I think it's the first five, five. yeah Tony. okay I'll do the first five yeah um, who want anyone want to do the uh, next uh, for four or that five? Six might involve it a little bit. Whoever wants that one, number six. Right there. Did I hear Tony say one through six now? Uh, yeah, I thought I heard Tony say one through six. Sure, I'll take the next six through ten. Is that what it is? The next five? Six through ten. You want to take? You want to? You want to do waterways? Oh. I don't mind. Uh, yeah. I'll do the other enterprise funds. I'll do. John, right, six, six through ten. Six through ten. I'll do ten, eleven. Why? No, eleven, John. Eleven. Ten, ten's already taken. But John's doing six through ten. All right, then I'll do eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Why don't you do fifteen? No, chapter ninety-one's pretty easy. So, and Rick, you're going to do CPC. I'll do sixteen and seventeen. They're both CPC. Sixteen, seventeen, and. Um, did John leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing so good. <laughs> Still here. I was, I've, my reason for taking a number of, instead of us bop, yeah. popping up and popping down like, you know, whack a mos we might as well just take a slate, a slate of them and then sit down and then somebody else takes it. Sure. So, Sean, um, why don't you do the, uh, actually, Rick, why don't you go through 18, and then Sean will do 17 through 23, and then we'll trade amongst ourselves if you want to. If Can I do number 20 because it's morning regulations? Because because I've been sure. working on that, and there's some discussion. Sean, do you mind that. if he does? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I do mind. <laughs> no, so I don't. Rick, care. you're 16, 17, and 20. Correct. And Sean is the rest. 18, 19, 21, 22, and 23. And the last one, really, you don't. You just you I, you probably do you want Mrs. Baker to speak to it, so you just have to move it. The nuclear safety one. Yeah, that that would probably be best. Well, he'll get up and say his five-minute orientation. And okay, that's done. So if there's any that you wanted to do, like, for instance, Rick, if you wanted to do waterways, you'd have to... No, I think Mr. Danny he is more than capable of handling waterways. Right. I'm happy to if it's local hits that way. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on to item number nine, which is a, a vote discussion of drain layer licenses. Um, the only Motion. question I... Uh, only quick question I had on them is... Is anyone here for, for that? No. Is that the, uh, the comp is outdated? 
do they give you, you check that again later, right? The, all the comp dates are, oh, 2011? I think that's Fall. actually when they're issued. Um, oh. I'm just seeing an expiration. Oh, no, it says date signed, so that's not expiration? Right. No. As so long as they're. The uh, sewer division checks on all of them. Okay. <clears throat> so I believe they are up to date. Right. Motion? Move one second vote to grant the following drain layers licenses E.L. Margots and Sons, All Town Inc., and James Rock Excavating. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. It's uh, five to zero. Item number 9A is um, the Housing Authority freezing of funds. Um, as uh, a lot of people in town probably read in the ledger on Friday, was it? Uh, yes, Friday. On Friday, there was a note uh, or an article um, dealing with the uh, freezing of some funds from the Housing Authority. And um, all of us, and Tricia contacted the people on the Wait. Housing Authority to um, find out what the problem was and what was going on with it. Um, what we found out is that, uh, and again, this is not this is an elected position and appointed by the state, so really out of the purview of our board, but obviously uh, relates to uh, the town of Situate and people that have housing needs um, that this authority does fund. Um, we spoke with them about it and found that there's um, confusion on a, a legal issue where two of the people on the board won't sign a document that would um, allow the state to release funds. And um, this is being dealt with and with town council to find out if they have the, the coverage that they need. And it's, we really, we can't force them to sign it. It's their own, um, their own discretion. So um, I know we're working on it to try and get it resolved as quickly as possible that so no one in the town goes without the um, housing and the funding that they need. Um, and I know the town council has gotten together with them and, and uh, hopefully we'll find some happy medium where these uh, members feel comfortable I'm signing the documents so that the funds can get unfrozen. Anyone have anything else to add to that? Yeah, uh, just so that there's clarification, Situate Housing Authority has nothing to do with the um, okay. Affordable Housing Trust, two separate entities. Right. So this is the Situate Housing Authority, which again is not appointed by this board. The Situate um, Affordable, housing, Affordable Trust. housing Trust, which John's a member on, is appointed by this board and, and, and Situate uh, appointed, and that has nothing to do with this. So there's no motion, that's just discussion. Move on to item number 10, which is um, uh, move the board of select and vote to appoint Becky Malamut to the Water Resource Committee. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And the last one? I'd move the board of select and vote to appoint all 15 applicants to the, the Veterans Advisory Council. Second. Second by? A term of one year. For a term of one year, yeah. sorry. We have to do the appointment card and they have to have a term. Okay. So, we'll, and we'll change some of them to twos and threes, so thank you. Um, second by Mr. Harris, further discussion? Great, Mr. Coley, thanks for taking the lead on that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Item number 11 is to accept the resignation of a Pier 44 thank you, Mrs. committee. Kelly. Move the board selectman vote to accept the resignation of Gabriel Dorsey from the Pier 44 committee and further the board thank Mrs. Dorsey for lending her time and expertise to the committee in the town of Situate. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Uh, again, that committee did a lot of good work and it will be coming uh, before the board very shortly, so we want to thank her for her work. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move on to item number 12, which is other business. Anybody have any other business? Mr. Murray? Yeah, I just wanted to bring up that um, as you know, our Harbor Master, Mark Patterson, in collaboration with the Waterways Committee, has often um, made proposals to the statewide Seaport Advisory Council, which is chaired by the Lieutenant Governor. Um, and uh, this consists of uh, major ports in the Commonwealth, including Gloucester and New Bedford and Boston. Um, and they meet every so often and um, apply for uh, funding. And Situate has been actually a pretty major player in the Seaport Advisory Council. They've been very pleased with the efforts that's been going on in our harbor, particularly with the commercial fleet and the boatyard and so on. And so the Seaport Advisory Council is actually going to be having their next meeting at our Maritime Center in early April. 
and uh, we're going to have all these people down here looking at our harbor and seeing what we're doing. So it's a very good opportunity um, to um, continue the good work that Mark and the, Mark Patterson and the um, Waterways Committee have been doing getting all this, and it's a, it's a pretty big thing. I mean, five years ago, it was all New Bedford and Gloucester and, you know, Plymouth and large ports, and the fact that we've been quite successful in generating much needed funds from them, and they're actually going to be coming down to little old Situate. It's a pretty big thing. Just Great. wanted to bring that up. And you've been seeing some emails on it, and we'll make sure we keep you all in the loop. You're all invited. Other people are invited to attend as well. It's a public meeting, of course. That's it for me. It's good stuff. No. Uh, I just have a, a couple of things. Uh, tomorrow night, the uh, students at Wampatuck School are being honored by the Social Community Action Council, at, uh, among other groups, uh, for their work in raising funds for a project that they've been working on for quite a while now. I'm going to go to that dinner. Uh, I just want to bring, bring it to the town's attention that there's a group of students who are being singled out by a pretty influential and large group on the South Shore, the South Shore Community Action Council, uh, for the work that they've done. So I just want to bring that up to everyone that we'll, we'll be going to that dinner and we'll report back on it. We're really proud of them. Uh, thank you. Um, just a couple quick things, a couple dates to mark on your calendar. 4 9 is the um, annual town meeting at the high school at 7 o'clock. Um, I want to thank the people who put the parade together. Um, yeah. Beautiful day, uh, just a huge turnout, and um, it was a fun walk uh, uh, down to First Parish Road, and uh, you know they did a great job as, as usual, and it was very entertaining for everybody. And Citrus Chamber of Commerce. Yes, exactly. Citrus it is. Chamber of Commerce, and uh, Mr. Kelly uh, put a lot of work into it. It was a great, great time, um, and also another uh, school event that went on. Gates had an art show last week at uh, the Maritime Center, and. Uh, it was just amazing the quality and level of art that come out of our, our school systems, and I, uh, I want to applaud uh, um, the teachers and all the organizations of that. It was a great thing. Anything else? Anyone forget anything? Oh, thank you to all the basketball. Basketball season's over, I think, for uh, all of the recreational groups. Um, I know we had a few winners um, that went all the way, and uh, thank them, thank the coaches, and thank the, the school for donating the, um, the gym space and everything, and now it's on to baseball. Um, item number 13 is uh, correspondence. I don't see any. There is none, Mr. Chair. Great. Item number 14 is acceptance of the minutes. Move the board select and vote to accept the executive session minutes of February 28th, 2012. Uh, Second by? three of us Second. here for that. Who was there? Second. Uh, Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? All in favor. Would be us. All in and favor? You asked who was there. Yep. You, me, and Sean. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's Abstained. unanimous uh, three to zero. Move the board select and vote to accept the regular session and executive session minutes of March 20th, 2012. Let's do them separately. So first we'll do the regular session. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second Mr. Harris? Abstained. Aye. This is the regular session. You were there for that one, right? Uh, March 20th, no, I, I was not last week. I, I'll just abstain. Oh, there wasn't that. regular. Wasn't there. He wasn't there for that. Okay. Move the board select and vote to accept the executive session minutes of March 20th, 2012. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. And lastly, um, item number 15. Are we going to? Not necessary. Not necessary. Great. Um, item number 16 is adjournment. Move to adjourn 902. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Jack, thank you for filming. Good night, folks. Good night.